Welcome to this StatsCast. In this StatsCast, we look at correlation coefficients. Correlation coefficients measure the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. In our first example, uh, we study marathon runners. And the scatter plot here shows the relationship between each runner's personal best time and the predicted race time. If we try to place a straight line through the points to capture this relationship, we really can't do it very well. No straight line really captures the relationship. And that's because the relationship is not linear, so a correlation coefficient is inappropriate for numer numerically describing this relationship. Correlation coefficients are appropriate for describing the strength and the direction of linear relationships. A second example comes from a study using paced breathing to study autonomic cardiovascular regulation. The scatter plot here shows the relationship between the change in end tidal CO2 and the change in minute ventilation. And you can see that here the relationship between the two quantitative variables is approximately linear, so a correlation coefficient is appropriate. This observation here, for example, corresponds approximately to a change in minute ventilation of about 5 litres per minute and a change in the end tidal CO2 of maybe minus 1.15%. Now a correlation coefficient is a numerical measure of the strength and the direction. The line is heading in what we call a negative direction, so the correlation coefficient will be negative. And it's a relatively strong correlation because the points are not that far away from the line. And so we might guess that the correlation coefficient is somewhere between, say, minus 0.4 and minus 0.9. We call that a correlation coefficient of zero means no relationship at all. The paper actually reports that in this case the correlation coefficient is minus 0.78. It's very difficult, though, to make a good estimate of what the correlation coefficient actually is. Our third example comes from a study of heavy metal accumulation in rivers. The authors produce this table of correlation coefficients that explores the relationship between the heavy metal concentration in river water and the average length and weight of certain species of fish in those rivers. And here's the result for one of those fish species. One of the correlations they've recorded here is between copper, Cu, and the length of the fish. And this correlation is also negative, it's minus 0.847, which means that as the copper concentration increases, the average length of the fish in that river decreases. The value of the correlation coefficient of minus 0.847 is actually quite strong, it's close to minus 1. So that means that the relationship between the copper concentration and the average length of fish is quite strong. Now for this particular article we don't have a scatter plot, so we must assume that the authors have examined the relationship between these two quantitative variables and found that it's approximately linear.